Hello everyone. For this video, I created a tool to generate a grid map from any sort of mesh. The grid will automatically resize itself to fit whatever mesh or tile we decide to generate it from. A grid can be used in many situations and is often what the main map is made up of in strategy games, tactical shooters and the like. You can find the code and this demo scene I created on my GitHub, link in the description down below. I'll show you how it works and then we'll talk about the code. So here we see a couple of different meshes, or tiles as I call them, once they've been placed into the grid. To bring out the tool, we open the window slash tile generator, and here we have a few different settings to choose from. We can specify a width as well as a length. This generate button will create the grid, and down here we will input the mesh that we want to use. We can choose one from the current scene view, or we can drag it from the inspector. We can use this cube, and the grid generator will instantiate a bunch of these cubes into a grid. We can take this other mesh, drag it into the inspector as a new prefab, and then into the tool. Change the size. Hit generate, and bam. The only thing on these objects is the tile script. No tags or layers or anything else. The tile script only contains the coordinates of the place tile right now. If you want to use a grid system like this, you will certainly want more data on this tile script, which is why I added it. This tool can also use rectangles. We can drag this rectangle cube into the tool, change the size again, since it's larger. The object doesn't have the tile skirt attached right now, but the tool will warn me if this is indeed the case. I can search for tile and add it to the object, and the warning will now go away. Hitting generate, we can now see the new grid that's resized itself to fit the rectangular mesh. The grid itself almost became square, but we can generate it to be a different shape. Looking at the individual tiles, we can see their coordinates, which is really just the order in which they were placed, starting from the lower left corner. You could of course scale this to be absolutely huge. Now, let's get into the code. The tile scripts. It's very bare bones. It only contains the coordinates right now. But all of the info that you might want on a tile could be placed here. Imagine creating chess, or a tactical shooter. You would need to know if it's occupied, who is occupying it, what type of tile it is, if it's passable, if it's blocked, if it deals damage, or if it's a trap tile, or anything of the sort. But currently, it's almost empty. Here is the tile generator. It inherits from the editor window. The show window and menu item just lets us use this and open it as an editor tool. The onGUI is like an update function while we are not in play mode. Here we see the UI part of the editor. The object field lets us choose a mesh or object. Size X and size Y is the width and length of the grid. And at the bottom we see the generate button, which calls the generate grid function. The generate grid function starts by generating an empty game object called tiles. We read the size of the mesh that we will be using in this tile size method. By reading the bounds of the mesh we know the size of the object, and we can offset our tiles based on that information. In this nested for loop is where it all happens. If you've seen nested for loops before, this is pretty standard stuff, otherwise it might look confusing. What happens here is that for every iteration of the first loop, the second loop will run its entire length. In the first loop, we take a single step to the right. In the second loop, we take a step forward along the c-axis, and then instantiate our first tile. It will then take another step forward and instantiate the next tile again, repeating this second nested full loop until we reach the full length. It then restarts in the first loop, moves a step to the side, and this all happens again. The last method, create tile simply instantiates the tile at the given position, and gives it coordinates based on what step of the loop we were in. It also instantiates it as so as to be parented to the empty game object that we created before. All in all, it's just 60-ish lines of code. It can be improved and expanded upon, but here you have the basics of generating a grid. I hope this can help you in your future endeavors. And again, you can download this project from my GitHub in the description down below. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.